the central teaching of the Christian church. Focus on three things this morning. <laughs> I pray that this story, this truth, this reality has captured your mind and your heart. That the resurrection is the anchor, the foundation of your life and your daily service. <clears throat> and that you know your future is locked in, safe, secure, in the living, resurrected Christ. Captured, captivated, turned on. You've seen people lately that have been captured, captivated, and turned on. If you were watching all the basketball games that have been played across the country in recent weeks. Something different happened this year uh, over against many previous years, and that was that many of the teams that were favored did not win. And so underdogs in many cases went up and went up and achieved great success, far beyond what anybody thought that those teams would achieve in this basketball tournament that's played out every spring across our country. But if you watch any of those games, sometimes the surprises and the excitement and the enthusiasm that took over those fans, and they would just jump up and down and, we won, we won, we won! because they had not expected to win. And nobody else really expected them to win. But against all the odds, they had won. There was such excitement. I watch a lot of those athletic, and those people are really turned on. I mean, they're excited. And even men, men, you know, a lot of men are like concrete blocks. They're just kind of like there. <laughs> you know, they don't say much, and some would say maybe they don't do much. But even men just kind of go over excited, turned on. Yep, they win, they jump up and down, they hug one another. You so, wow. Now you've seen another, I've seen other places. You know, I guess it's all changed in the last 20, 25 years. There was a time when a person would have a child and they didn't know if it was going to be a boy or a girl until it was born. And that's not so much the case anymore. But I was around a number of births where people, oh, the nurse came out and said, well, Mr. So-and-so, you're now the father of a son. Well, the one time I was there and and the nurse came out and said, Mr. Son, you're the father of a son. And you will now have two sons. Uh, <laughs> and wow, it was twins, and it was unexpected. And they were wow, I'm a father. Two sons. Wow. I'm sure everywhere he went in the coming days, the word was shared. That's what happens when people are touched at the center of their being. But isn't that what happened on Easter morn when they went to the tomb? They weren't expecting to find a living, risen Lord. They were expecting to find a dying, decaying body. And that something unexpected happened. And the announcement came that Jesus Christ was a lie. And that Jesus Christ would go forward ahead of them. And they were to go out with the story of Jesus Christ alive. And that story captured them. And that story turned them on and turned them out. And that story has been going out for 2,000 years. Because people don't expect to find a living man among the dead. And no other world religion teaches this truth. It's all about, oh, believing systems and 
the universe, oh, a bunch of stuff. But this, this stuff, this story is the true story of God. And that captured their hearts, turned them on, and turned them out. And we're going to be reading about that in the coming weeks of Easter as we come back to the book of Acts every week. These people are turned on and they're turned out sharing with others that Jesus Christ is alive. That's what you do when you are turned on. You turn out to others. And you share the story if you're team one or if you're the father of twins or if your Savior has been raised from the dead. What a story. What a story to be turned on to and to be excited about and to be sharing with others. My question to you, is that story captured? Has that story really turned you on? I pray it has. Centered in your being, given a kind of a skip to your heart. Jesus Christ is alive. Not just back then, right now, right here, for us today. <coughs> God active in the world, right now, right here, today. Jesus Christ is alive. Not a dead God. Not a living, not a memory. But a living reality. The story that captures you know, so many people are, well, they're captured by stories that are just passing in the night. The Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, but they'll pass. There'll be another team that'll take their place. You go through town after town in Iowa, and they'll say the 2022 wrestling champs of state A. Well, yeah, that was in 2022. But they're They'll be forgotten in a few years. It'll pass. But this story, this has not been forgotten. This story is believed. I don't know, there's two billion people on the planet today named the name of Jesus as their Christ, as their Savior, as their centered love. They have been captured. That Jesus Christ is alive. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that story, that truth, is a center message that is proclaimed across the planet today. Isn't it a wonderful story? Isn't it a wonderful truth? It does it just bring you great joy? If you've heard it 10 times or 82 times or 185, it doesn't matter. It's the true story. It's God's story. It's about a God so powerful, so deeply in love, so presently active, that his son was raised to life and lives to this day and touches hearts across all parts of this world. Captured. Oh, my prayer for you more than anything. You know that you can look at all the people who have been captured by the story of Jesus. You know, you can look at uh, C.S. Lewis. You can look at Mother Teresa. You can look at Pope John Paul II. I can think of so many people that have been turned on and turned out and given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, there's a couple lay people, and I talked to them about a month ago in, this, in one of the sermons here. I saw a couple men upon my journey in life that were really captured by Jesus, fell in love with Jesus, and really believed that Jesus was alive and was alive in their hearts and minds. My fellow janitor in Minneapolis, George Minsky, and the man who always rang the chimes at the first church I served in Green Bay, Ed Schultz. I'll never forget their faces. Their words were touched always by the love of Jesus. They were captured. They were turned on. And they were turned out by the love of God in the risen Christ. I knew them both when they were in their 70s. 
but I have a feeling that had been going on a long time before these are earth regions were captured. I pray today on this Easter, you're captured, turned on, and you're turned out by Jesus Christ. And then the second point, that your anchor is in Jesus Christ. We're living in a time of tremendous change. Almost everything that Western civilization has stood for is being put to the test. There is significant decline and erosion. There, you know it. We talk about it every Sunday. We read about it daily in our papers. We see it on our screens. In a sense, not only is this country coming apart, but the world is coming apart as it moves closer to war again and again and again. And it is the story of the ages. This is a broken situation we're in. It doesn't work. People are mean and hurtful and destructive and usury and self-centered, and they will do anything to further their own ends. You know that. I know that. We know our hearts. We know this world. It just breaks your heart to see what is going on, has gone on, and will go on. And where do we, where do we have an anchor in this? Jesus, 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 resurrected Jesus, even when it does break apart, even when the children are abused or forgotten, even when the church is not faithful, even when the politicians are corrupt and disinterested. And even when the world moves toward world, what do we have as an anchor? The living Christ, Jesus. I don't know what else you have to hold on to. I always would, and I don't mean to be negative about it, these things that try teaching in public schools, character counts and all that crap and values, and all that stuff, you know, like these kids are going to have a positive attitude. We're going to teach them to be kind. Yeah, you teach them to be kind. Then you push them out the door. The world will knock the crap out of them in 30 days. And if you don't believe it, you don't know what's going on in the world. So what do you have? Your attitude, good luck. Our anchor is Jesus, living God. This is what we have. No, that's wrong. He has us. He's alive. He wraps us in his presence. He gives us power. He holds on to us when everything else is crumbling. Jesus is our anchor. We have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Solid anchor in the midst of a changing and scary world. Whether you're 3, 13, or 83, Jesus is the anchor. And then locked in your future. I don't know if you know this. But I'm sure many of you in your life, you've, you've paid for homes. And you've got a mortgage. And most people in this country get a 30-year mortgage when they're buying a home. <coughs> now go to a 15-year. But then they have a locked-in rate. They know what it is, right? Recently, interest rates were extremely low, and many people refinanced and locked in their mortgage at 3% or 2.75 for 30 years. Well, a lot's happened in the last 16 months, and they aren't going to see those rates for a long time again. But they're locked in. They know about the future. Do you know in Great Britain, they don't have those kinds of mortgages. They're all adjustable rate. And you, can you understand? A year ago when inflation in Great Britain was running at 10%, <coughs> not only were their food costs up and their petrol costs up, but their mortgage was really going up. It's adjustable rate. That's the way they do it there. So you don't have the guarantee over your future. We have a guarantee over our future because of this. 
Again, I'm going to take you back to that first Peter text, 1, 3 to 9. To an inheritance undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you who are guarded by faith. Your future is locked in because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's coming again. He will raise the dead. You will live. Your sins are forgiven. Even if you suffer harm or danger in the intermediate times, you will not lose your God. Your future is locked in. Paul's beautiful words in Romans. Nothing now or in the future will ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Locked in to the victorious resurrection we celebrate and remember today. Oh, I hope that turns you on. And I hope it turns you out. And I hope you'll tell the story. That you spend the rest of your life as a storyteller. And I keep, for people that have children or grandchildren or neighbor's kids or anybody that will listen to me, tell them about Jesus. Teams come and go. Governments come and go. You and I come and go. But this story about a God who doesn't just come and go, but is here forever, loves us forever, forgives us forever, comes for us, and will never leave us forever. That's a story that we've got to tell. Three things this Easter. I pray you're captured, indeed you're turned on by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It excites you, it enthralls you, and though you've heard it for a lifetime, you're more excited today than you were when you were younger. Second, in the midst of change and upset and trouble and fear, that your anchor is Jesus, the living God who helps now and forever, isn't going to let you go. Promised. And that's the third point. Your future is locked in because he lives. He's coming again. He's going to get you through every day. And nothing, now or in the future, will ever separate you from his love. Oh, what a day, what a story, what a God, what a love. Thanks be to God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. From the dead. Let's arise and sing our hymn of the day, 140.